Hey, what's up guys? I've decided to remake my how to make a server video. So this time it'll actually be for 1.7.4. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to bucket.org and we're going to get the recent, most recent craft bucket now. It says here it's one for, for 1.7.2. Well, that's the most recent bucket craft bucket they released. So it does work for 1.7.4 users. So you can download this. So usually you can go, since it's a beta build, it's not recommended, which is when you can download it straight at that place. So what you're going to do is dl.bucket.org. And takes us right here. And the beta build should be right here. Now, if you're watching this down in the future somewhere, you're going to go to alternate versions, and you're going to look, depending on if it's development or not. Usually, it's not recommended because recommended take a while. See the for at this point the their most recent recommended build was for 1.6.4 and we don't want that. So you're gonna get the beta build and I recommend downloading the downloading it to your desktop just makes things simple. And wait for that. Okay so the download is finished and what we're gonna do put this right here. Now we're gonna open a text document and we're going to name it starter or launch or whatever you really want to name it. You can open it up and we're going to type at sign echo space off hit enter type java space dash xms and then this is where you're going to put in the amount of RAM your server is going to use. So usually about a gig of RAM is safe because some computers don't have much RAM and a server can run quite well if it's just like you and your friends on one gig. So do 1024 for that. And then M for megabytes. So that's a thousand megabytes which is just a gig. And then space dash XMS actually let's capitalize that. And we're gonna do the same thing. 1024. Oops and then M, and then space. Now we're going to do dash jar space craft bucket dot jar. Hit enter and type pause. That is the launcher for your server. So then when you save as, you got to make sure you save it as dot bat. So starter dot bat in the same place and as you can see here it makes a little batch file which is just a little program that runs so what we're going to do is we're going to folder we're going to name any, anything we want but we got to make sure not to put a exclamation mark because it will find it will cause an error and it won't run the server so what we're going to do is just name it server I don't know put the starter you made and the craft bucket in there now we're going to rename the craft bucket. We're just going to take off all this crap on the end and just leave it craft bucket. And double click starter. And it should load up. You have to have Java, at least I think Java 6 or 7 for this. So it will automatically load all the files. It will actually create them because it doesn't have any right here. And then it will make this, you will create the worlds and set up the spawn. And done. Now you know when you're done. So we're gonna do here is we're gonna test this now I'm gonna go over port forwarding with you but this is for my specific router and it will kinda of be like a general idea for most routers so I already have it port forwarded but it's on a certain port that this isn't this server that I just made is not set up so we're gonna go in to our browser and you're gonna have to well, let's see. You're going to have to find the your router, and you usually have to have a router. Sometimes if you don't, it will let you get away with not port forwarding at all, which is really cool. So, but I'm since I have a router, we're just going to go. Usually you put in 192.168.1.1, and then usually it will bring you to this little setup thing. Now, you can look up the model of your router if you know where your router is and you can look at the bottom and 
Sometimes they have the username and password on the bottom, like the default. Sometimes if that if it if they have that, you can put that in and it'll log you in so you can set up your port forwarding. But sometimes if it doesn't have it, you can look up the model on the internet and get the default username and password. Now, if someone already has control of your router and they have the password and username and you can't get it from them and they won't let you, then you're screwed. So for mine, I'm just gonna log in here. Because I don't have a username. So now this is my router. So what you go, usually it's around like applications of gaming or port range forwarding and stuff like that. See port range forward or port triggering. Now I have a bunch of ports already here, so just ignore that, but usually Minecraft servers do 25565 for their ports. So if it's like start and end port, you put 25565, name the application Minecraft. Usually, I'm not saying it's going to be exactly like this because usually all routers are different. So this little part, oh yeah, make sure this is both. And if it doesn't have a both, then just, I guess, choose one of them. Now this part, this is critical. We're going to have to open the CMD for this. So type CMD in your search or run. You can also open run and then type CMD. And what we're going to do is we're going to type IP config. And it's going to bring us some information here. So we're going to look for the IPv4 address. And mine happens to be 192.168.1.106. The 106 at the end. The little number at the last dot. That is what we put in right here for our port. So since mine's 106, I put 106. If yours is like 10, you put 10. Or if it's like 107, I don't know. It can be anything. So then you're going to enable it if it has an enabling thing. And you're going to save that. And then once that's all Jim Dandy, all right. Can exit out of that. Exit out of the CMD thing we have open. By the way, never exit out of a server. When you want to stop it, you type stop but I'm not going to stop it. Actually, I am. Just to make sure it gets the settings I just set in my router. So then, sometimes you don't have to do that. It depends on your router. So I'm going to open up Minecraft here. Now, another thing we have to find, actually, is your external IP. The internal IP was the one with the 192 thing, or whatever was on the IPv4. External is what the IP you give to your friends to join your server. So what you do is you go like IP chicken or something like that. And just usually I like IP chicken simple. There's mine right there. Right there. That is what you give to people. So when you go onto your server, yes I have a bunch of servers. Okay. So you're gonna control copy the thing on the website and then control V to paste in Minecraft if you don't already know. Now, the port we just used was 25565, so you're going to do a colon, which is not a semicolon, and 25565 at the end, and done. So the server I just added here happens to be right here, and okay, my Minecraft is not logged in on a legit account. One sec. Okay, I had cracked Minecraft from Team Extreme and I didn't remember that it was logged in. Now, there is a way to make your server accept cracked users, but it's a little insecure because people can go on as you and like ruin your server. So, it, so when you log in, it should let you log in if you're not cracked. And then, whoa. Okay, so this is the server I just made. And hopefully you just made. <laughs> I'm probably going really fast because people don't like long videos. So there's another thing here. We can actually take up the console. This is called the console right here. Okay then. And we can type op and then your name, your username, which is mine happens to be that. And then hit enter and it will op you automatically. And you can see on your Minecraft that you just got opt. So then you have commands like game mode creative and you can like you know so on and so forth so now that I've shown you how to make it and hopefully there's no like problems I mean I know one way to fix a problem like if it comes up with an error like it can't load the server like with like it doesn't have Java or something that means you need to install Java 
And if that doesn't work, then usually it could be because the starter you made was typed wrong. Because when you type Java, it's looking for the program Java to run the craft bucket in the files here. This is a Java, a jar file that's run by Java. So if it's not typed correctly in oh, in the, uh, the starter, like Java R or something, watch this. Stop my server. Okay, so when I start it, it's going to be like, oh, I don't know what Java R is, so I'm not going to run it, and you're going to screwed. So check, make sure that it is Java. Sometimes Java W works. I don't know. Could try that. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and get some plugins. Now, bucket servers, which is actually what I've been showing you, I forgot to mention that, are awesome because it's not just a regular server. Basically, like a regular vanilla server from Minecraft.net is like single player with the basic commands, but in multiplayer. So there's nothing really to do besides getting creative and spawning in items. But this is amazing. So Bucket lets you get plugins that make you able to do certain, like, crazy things, like World Edit. This is, like, the one of the best plugins ever. Let's see if we can find it here. So, World Edit. It should just be straight up World Edit because there's a lot of, like, copies. Here, World Edit. This is so cool. You can, like, make huge buildings and architecture, like, just in a, a couple clicks and a command. So... We're, this is a zip archive, which is usually supposed to be a jar, so it's the jars are in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our server folder here, and we're going to go into plugins, and might as well just save the zip in there. So then when we go into plugins, we can open this with WinZip or, or WinRAR, wait, I mean 7-zip, and then we take the worldedit.jar and drag it right in where that is, and we can just delete this zip here. So now we have the plugin. So what you can either do is if your server's already running, you can just type reload in the console and hit enter, or you can just start it up if it's not. And then wait for that to load, and we go back to Minecraft, and hopefully it's already on. There. There it is. Okay, so now we can type slash slash wand if we're up already, but I mean we already did that. So this wooden axe is quite special. You can hit the ground for the first position to set and then like this second position for right clicking. So now you have two positions so it selects the entire area you just did in a straight line so it's actually a big square and you can type slash slash set or replace or such, but I'm just going to use slash slash set diamond, which will put diamond blocks right there. And it will be solid, so it's not going to be hollow. Solid, through and through. And then if you accidentally mess up on something, you just type slash undo. Now, for all the commands for world edit, it's always usually two slashes, but except for the undo and the redo. Because I can actually do redo right now, and it will put it back. So there's like there's a lot of things you can do, like slash slash sphere... One, 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 I think. Yeah. And I just made a tiny little sphere, but you can make it like 10, I think, like that. If I'm, nope, that made a lava sphere. Oops, that was a mistake. Okay. I think it's like block and then the, the uh, dimensions after that. Oh, whoa. Okay. It just made a solid sphere. Huge sphere. I love that. And then you can just get rid of that. So that is my favorite plugin. There are a lot more plugins you can get, and you can just install them the way I did. Just put the jar right in your plugins folder and reload or just restart your server, and it should load it right in. And then you can learn the commands. Usually you can type slash help and world edit right here. Slash help world edit. And it will tell me all the commands, and then you can do like world edit slash help world edit two, and it'll give you the next page, and then three. 
give you the next page. And there's a ton of commands in world edit. Like, this is pretty cool. You can drain the water. Like drain, like, a radius of 50. Boom, water's gone. <laughs> in that whole radius of 50, which is a giant circle or sphere around you. So, as, you have to be in the fluid, though. So, that is my favorite plugin. There's a lot more. You can go and get them. I, I'm not going to waste my time. So, <laughs> That is how to make a 1.7.4 server, and usually it stays in this sort of way to make a server when they update Minecraft, as long as Bucket.org has released a craft bucket for that version of Minecraft. So, thank you for listening, and hopefully this helped you.